What is up guys, RevitUp7 here. Um, today I figured I would show you guys the completed step-by-step -step process of a project that I was working on. Um, I was converting this Porsche 944 turbo Hot Wheels car into my 924S. And um, it, at first glance, it seems like the cars are almost identical, but there's a couple stylistic things that uh, set them apart still. And I figured I would try to come as close as I possibly could to making um, my exact car. So I'm going to cut to the process that I um, used to create the car as well as everything you need to do this project and projects like this. Okay, to do a custom Hot Wheels car, you're going to need A, the car you are going to want to be customizing and changing up. In my case, this is a um, 2020 Porsche 944 Turbo Hot Wheels car. I'm sorry for the bird. I'm doing this in my garage and I'd like the natural lighting. And next, the car, you're going to get whatever extra parts you want from. In my case, I'm taking the wheels off of this second generation Corvette Stingray. You're going to need a paint stripper. In my case, it is this quick strip fast paint and uh, varnish stripper. Um, you can get these at Walmart for roughly, I think, $15 and this is enough for any customs you'd ever need. It only takes 15 minutes to completely get the paint off. Um, this is actually my first time doing this, so I don't know how long it's gonna take in my experience. Um, when you're using paint stripper, you're going to want a mask, just to keep the toxic sort of fumes out of your um, system. Also, don't hover over this for any reason, I mean, because I'm imagining that mask doesn't keep everything out. And at least one surgical glove for the glove that's exposed and um, holding the car or whatever you're actually stripping the paint from. Next, for when the paint stripper is actually getting most of the paint off, you want a toothbrush or an, in a better case, you want a more fine and stiff brush type of thing, but a toothbrush worked for me. You are going to want, in my case, a better paint, like a paint to actually paint the car when you're done. I'm painting it the same shade of red. This is a paint plus primer. If you don't have a paint plus primer, you're going to want a, a clear coat or a primer, and you want that and then a paint, um, and then some spray paint. This is paint press primer, so it's a little more um, durable. So I'm just going to be using this. And last but not least, to unassemble the car, you're going to want a drill and this drill bit. I don't actually have the specific measurements of this drill bit, but you're going to be drilling the Hot Wheels car apart in these rivets. And to put this casting, there's only a single rivet, because the back of the car is held in place with a tab, which is also the license plate, which I think is pretty cool. But you are going to need at least this type of drill bit to unassemble the car and be begin any custom processes, um, any Hot Wheels customization. So next I'm going to get into the first step, which is unassembling the car. You're going to want to begin by drilling out the rivets of the car. This Porsche 944 only has one in the front and the back is held in with a little tab. So this was a little bit easier than the average Hot Wheels Custom I'd imagine. Then once you have the rivet drilled out, you're going to pull the car apart and unassemble. First taking off the body, setting it aside, then the windows and interior following. And next is going to be popping the wheels out. There are little plastic tabs to hold the wheels in and you're going to use a small um, flathead screwdriver to pop the tabs out. You're not going to need these wheels so I kind of just disregarded them and um, threw them aside because they're not something I'm going to use for the rest of the project. Next you're going to take your donor car and drill out both rivets of this car. As you can see since this is my first custom I had some trouble. Looks like things are going good here until bam. Yeah I had to cut the entire bottom of the car up with a Dremel and a cutting, um, cutting wheel just to get to the wheels. It was very difficult and I'm going to need more practice on this. But once you get the wheels out, you can try to pop them back into the um, the Porsche or whatever car you're working on. I popped them back into the areas where the tabs were and then super glued over the tabs just to be sure it's not going to fall, like come apart while you're using the car or if you accidentally drop it or something. Not that I'm going to be using this car at all really because it's not extremely durable. For the paint removal, you're going to separate your body and place it on a cardboard or tin foil, any sort of like material that you can use to prevent 
whatever surface is underneath from getting damaged. And then I use a toothbrush to spread the paint thin around. This stuff is extremely powerful. You're going to want to wear a mask, gloves, and any eye protection you can. And paint thinner is extremely flammable, so keep it away from an open flame. Um, hopefully you're not having it near a flame anyway, but like probably not a smart idea to light cigarettes or anything like that when you're working with paint thinner because it's an extremely flammable product. This is a time lapse actually of the paint thinner working its magic. Pretty cool, you can see it bubble up. Now you're going to use a, the same toothbrush to scrape off the paint after letting it sit for roughly 15 to 30 minutes. Um, you're not going to get everything off in the first attempt. I only used one coating, but um, you can get the rest of the paint off with a sanding wheel. I, I used my Dremel to also get the excess paint off from the hard to reach areas because I didn't have time for a second coat of paint thinner. And uh, it worked great. There's a lot of paint left in the interior, but that's all going to be covered up, so it didn't really bother me. Next, you're going to be sanding the fender flares down. At least that's what I did for this car, because the Porsche 924 is actually a thinner car than the 944 because the 944 has fender flares. So I just used a more, like a stronger sanding wheel to basically grind down the fender flares as much as I could without opening up the wheel arches too much more. It was pretty tedious, and I'm cutting up a lot of this footage so it looks a lot shorter, but this was probably a 15-20 minute process on its own. And as you can see now, the car is not as wide and appears to be a 924 from the top, back, and front. For spray paint, I just used, as demonstrated in the materials list, some um, Paint Plus Primer, red satin red spray paint. I didn't need high gloss because I didn't want to worry about like a longer dry time. So I just took it out here on a piece of cardboard and sprayed it in my backyard a little bit. You can see where I accidentally shot some spray paint into my yard. But it's a pretty quick process to paint the car. As you can see, once you assemble it by popping it back together, this is what you're going to have. I have a little black spot in the hood from smudging it on it, from smudging something on it, but I later got that off and began the detailed painting process. For detail painting, I used like 50 cent acrylic paint from Walmart. This isn't supposed to be a perfect custom, but just enough to satisfy my sort of requirements for what I wanted the car to look like. So I just use a mechanical pencil as the brush because you're getting really fine here and you don't, and I don't have any brushes that will get to the level of precision that I need as a mechanical pencil would. This looks a little sloppy here with the tail lights, but I later um, sort of got the excess paint away from where I was trying to paint. Once again, gray acrylic, orange acrylic. I didn't spend more than four dollars. I mean, I didn't spend more than two dollars on paint um, for this car. Now I'm painting on the front taillights. And later, I'm going to move on to the rear reflectors. You can hardly see it, but they're red on the car anyway, so it's a nice little added detail. I also did the mirrors on the Porsche 924S and the 944. There's a little bit of plastic trim around the mirrors, and I did a little bit of that rear wing off camera, but that is why some of the cars already painted when I began the painting process, or at least the painting recording. And um, yeah, I would have liked to have got that stuff on camera, but it's difficult to do this work also in the view of camera and do it precise at the same time. Now I am doing the bottom trim underneath the car. And if I'm, I'm painting a little bit of black over the 944 body kit, because my Porsche 924 doesn't have that. I also did the windshield wiper jets, and now I'm doing the weather stripping around the sunroof. For the bumpers, by the way, that are only required on the American cars, um, nowhere else in the world required those little foam bumpers. Um, I used a foam strip of paper, or foam sheet of paper, cut it into a long, narrow strip, and then cut little rectangular prisms out of them, dumped them in the black acrylic paint, spread them around a bit, and then spread them around a bit on the napkin outside of the paint so that they dried, and the um, foam actually absorbs a lot of the paint, which makes it easy to, um, makes it easy to paint them. Next, I tried to hot glue them onto the bumper of the car, but it requires such a small amount of hot glue that it dried almost instantaneously when you try to press it down. Like you see, it's already dried. That was a pain to do. But I ended up using super glue, which was kind of stressful because I didn't want to make any mistakes that required me to take the bumpers off because I'd A, ruin the bumper, and B, ruin the uh, paint underneath. 
bump. Using tweezers to do it as precisely as I could, I held the bumpers onto the car, pushed them down a little bit to flatten the foam, make them a little more realistic in size, and just pressed. Here's the back as well, the back two bumpers. And with all this like touching the bumpers, squeezing them with tweezers, pushing them down to um, glue them, I did take some of the black acrylic paint off of the initially white foam. So I went and repainted them once they were onto the car to give them that perfect look without basically looking like they'd been through a sandblaster. But here I am just adding some added detail to the bumpers and you'll see some footage in a second of what the car looked like once they were all painted. I think at this point it was looking pretty good. I'd never done a custom before. And so far I was really proud of how this car was turning out. Next we move on to the pop-up headlights and for these I used the back of a clothespin, cut the back of a clothespin off, then cut it down the middle and through a lot of like precise cutting and grinding I got to these small little triangular prism type things to which I glued to the headlight area of the car after painting the sides black for accuracy um, using super glue and tweezers. This was actually not that difficult getting them on but getting the exact same type of cut was the difficult part so that they were angled right and also the same size. And then I proceeded to paint the top of the headlights the color of the body, because when the headlights are down, you want it to be the same color of the body, um, so that it keeps that sleek look that pop-up headlights were designed for to begin with. For this, I just did the typical mechanical pencil dipped in acrylic paint. It's not the exact shade, and it didn't turn out perfectly, but it's it was the best I could do with what I was working with, because if you use a brush that's too um, stiff, it'll spread the paint around, because acrylic paint's kind of weak, and it'll just kind of you'll see the underlying paint. So here are some side profile shots in comparison with the original car. Um, I'm using a the donor car, like the original 944, so it's got some paint chipping on it and the windshield's a little bit screwed up, but it is a good um, comparison from what the car looked like out of the box versus what I did with it. You'll see a top view in a moment that shows how the car is slightly more narrow where the fenders, where, where the fenders are not a perfect comparison but you can see the fender flares have been narrowed a little bit there you go and right after I did the side-by-side -side comparisons I realized that I forgot a couple other small um, improvements to the car I put the license plates on using a license plate generator website and my printer put them on with some blue ticky tack I got some gray paint to paint the mirrors on and a little black dot above the license plates for the keyhole. That's how I did it. Thank you guys very much. Subscribe for more Hot Wheels content, Monster Jam content. Um, mostly we've been doing unboxings and reviews recently but we're gonna dabble back into gaming videos eventually. This was a big project that I was working on and now we're gonna open up the door for different types of content again so that might be gaming videos. Um, more projects like this and maybe even some I don't know, track videos if we have enough time with all the um, increased free time we have from the quarantine. But let me know if you thought this was edited smoothly, if you thought that the music was too loud, my narrating was too loud, or if I was a little bit too quick with my narrating. I really kind of enjoyed this process, and I'm thinking about maybe doing more customs in the future. So let me know what your thoughts are, and um, thank you for watching this to the end if you did. Um, yeah. Stay safe.